When I was a kid, my first experience with Japanese anime was a TV series called Kimba the White Lion. Now, I was really, really small when that came out, and I remember nothing about it. After that, though, I think the first one that I really connected to was Battle of the Planets, which I still love today. It was just great. Uh, it was very different to the Japanese Gatchaman. They used the same animation, but not the same story, and they Americanized it, and they added some new stuff to it. And the funny thing was, at the end of it, it actually kind of worked. I think it worked in some ways better than the Japanese version. And then there was Macross. And Macross was probably one of the biggest that had been brought over from Japan. It worked pretty well. But I think of all the ones that came over that I saw when I was in high school, the one that I liked the most, and that was Space Battleship Yamato, which we called Star Blazers. It had some pretty hoopy ideas. They took... The Yamato battleship that was sunk during the Second World War and built it as a spaceship. And it's pretty funny. I mean, it's a pretty hoopy idea. They had to be on drugs. But it worked. A lot of the Japanese stuff tended to have anti-war messages or environmental issues sort of thing. And that sort of had both. We'd come afoul of this alien race that was just dominating and destroying anything that it couldn't sort of ingest into its own sort of culture. A little bit like the Romans, but sort of in a way a little bit more violent than they were. I mean, they were pretty bad in a lot of ways, but I think they sort of caricatured the Gamelons to be that little bit worse. And so you had this thing, they were planet bombing the Earth and causing vast amounts of radiation all over the planet. So everyone was now living underground and even then now the radiation was, was seeping down. So it was, it was a lot about the possibility of a full-on nuke war it sort of was trying to get the idea of this across about destroying the planet i mean they but it wasn't too heavy-handed that was the good thing it wasn't really this big agenda driven anime series it just had some ideas that as a kid you might go okay actually some of this is you know maybe we should think about but i love this concept of taking this uh, ship and turning it into a spaceship and it was great the animation the main cannons were still there the beams would intertwine and it, it was a lot of very cool stuff and the other year, they uh, redid it and kept some of the original sort of stuff shot for shot and just upped the animation level uh, spectacularly and then made the enemy a lot uh, deeper and a lot more interesting. I think it was made by Bandai. Bandai also sponsors, if not directly makes. I'm not quite sure how that works. But they've, they're involved in a, several different animation projects. So with that, they make models based on these. Cap ships are rather... Well, they can be expensive because they're big. They're capital ships. They're bigger. It's easier to do fighters and stuff like that. But a capital ship can be quite expensive as a kit. I think anyone who makes uh, Star Trek models knows that they're not always the cheapest things to get into. So Bandai does these tiny, tiny ones. They're only a couple of inches long. Uh, they, they're an afternoon build. They are pre-colored. And uh, if you just want to build it out of the box, some of them come with uh, stickers and that. You can just whip it on and put it together and away you go and you've got yourself a ship. Uh, for me, I wanted to paint it. I wanted to weather it. I wanted to try to do a little bit to it. I mean, it's only a couple of inches long. It's only so much, you know, I could do. It still was a nice project in between a couple of the bigger things that I've done. I recently did the A-Wing. So I was looking for something that was sort of easy while I was trying to decide what next to do. And this line of kits totally fits the bill and they've got some macross ones they've got some uh, uh star wars obviously they're doing if, if there's about 12 or 13 star wars ones for this and they've got a fair few of these space battleship yamato so this is from the comet empire it's an enemy ship it was sort of different and i like the idea of it and there was just something about it i mean it's not exactly a beautiful ship by any sort of means it's all sort of wrong uh you know that it's sort of like should be one or the other it either should be this big flat hold sort of thing or it should be a streamlined center section fuselage kind of thing and it's actually both so it's not exactly the most attractive of ships when you look at it i kind of liked how the whole thing sort of was and that and it was ten dollars this is a ten dollar kit so it comes wrapped in a very small box, everything self-contained. The instructions aren't a piece of paper like, like you normally get in the kit. They're actually printed on the inside of the box. It's only like five steps to do the whole thing because like there's not that much to it. Most of the things, and it's a snap together, there's no glue required. And I didn't use any glue on the kit at all. I did use a tiny bit of filler, but no glue. It just snapped together. Uh, everything went together pretty well. Only a couple of small issues, but nothing that was really annoying. And it was just great fun. So you rip it open and everything is 
in I think it was just two bags and it was the hull and some of the weapon systems which is what those round domes are they fire and spin a bit like a Gatling gun then the rest of the ship the thrusters the bridge and the hull sort of stuff like the um the fuselage it's not really a fuselage but that's all in white so you can just put it together and be done if you want and one nice thing that comes with all of these, uh, except for like the ATST in Star Wars because you don't need it, and probably the ATAT for the same, is they come with a little stand, which is nice. And I mean, in some ways you're going to say, well, if it's a cap ship, you're just going to have to sit on the desk if you didn't have a stand. Yes, I totally agree with you. But you, you know how many times you think you're going to get a stand with some of these kits and you don't? So it's, it's nice that it's, it's totally uh, included. And this is the main section of the fuselage above it. So overall, the detail's not too bad. I mean, this is probably not the greatest piece to show for that, but it's got the, uh, I think that's a missile sort of system on the side, that groove. It's just got some nice panel lines. Now, the panel lines might be a bit deep, but I mean, this thing's only two inches long, so they're going to put a lot of sort of exaggeration in some areas so you see it. So you've got the side thrusters there and the main thruster at the back, and that's a really nice uh, look at actually how Bandai does things. The big circle, like tube, connector and the small one that means that when you go to put the piece below it onto it there's only one way it's going to go if you do it the other way it's not going to work so you can only put this together one way and i like that they usually do this and even left and right pieces a lot of the time like on the a-wing there was a slight groove different between the left and the right and that way you could always get it correct no matter which way you were doing it you couldn't get it wrong if you went to put it and it wasn't fitting you knew you had the wrong side if you weren't looking at the numbers now on this one there's so few pieces that you can't really get yourself lost but it's really nice that they do this because that way you know you're getting it to the right position and the bottoms to the right position and it just goes together really well and that's part of the bridge on the right and this is the main there's a, these three weapon systems there they go on the top of the main fuselage and it clicked on so well that was so easy and you know it's not really super detailed but you can see each of the grooves in the guns and that's the top hole and really there's a fair bit that's actually there and yeah I, I i would say that the grooves and the um slats and some of that stuff is a little bit overdone uh but again this is the size of this thing you want to be able to see it if they made it subtle there's a good chance you wouldn't see it when looking at it from any sort of distance bit of the detail underneath is actually quite nice but you're not really going to see it and the big hole in the center there that's where the stand goes so the overall color i think was meant to be white and green which is how they molded it so i kept with green but I used a different green. Mine's darker than what was intended on the box. I also, in the end, didn't paint the side uh, hexes orange. I think they were orange on the uh, box art. I didn't go with that. I just kept it green. Overall, I just sort of kept a sort of more uniform look again because it's small. It's more about sort of showing not fake detail and colorization, but it, it doesn't have to be the same as on a, on a big ship where you want everything to be super accurate. Uh, the bottom went pretty nice. The only thing is I did give a second coat. As you can see, that underneath each of the grooves, there's still the uh, light green of the original plastic. So I did give this a second coat of green before I moved on. I used Army Painter Green. Uh, I love Army Painter as a spray. It's really nice. And you totally get your money's worth out of it. So I started spraying the hull on that a grey. I decided not to go white. I thought a, a, a grey and a green would look kind of interesting. So I... The one thing that was good about the Bandai here is you can see that all the places that the sprue connects is actually on bits that are going to click in. So because of that, I could spray the entire thing still on the sprue and it wouldn't be a problem. I just moved to the uh, rest of the pieces. I all sprayed them grey as well. I decided that all the center section was going to be grey and then everything else was going to be green. So that's what I worked on. I needed a couple of coats and some of the things I redid too because like the thrusters... The sprues connecting to the top or side, the guns, the center guns, it's connecting to the sides, and the uh, engines connected to the sides, uh, things like that. So you, there was always going to be that little bit of uh, after you, you cut, trimmed it off and then sanded it, you're going to have that area that. So I had to respray a couple of bits, but it's no big deal. I mean, things small, clicked together, and then the center section clicked on top. Absolutely no problem. I did do a little filler and sanding just because that groove was a little big. It wasn't terrible. And I mean, I'm not stressing too much. This is a $10 kit. It's a snap together kit and it's really just for fun. So I tried to get it as good as I could get it for what I was happy with, but I didn't stress it. If this was a one of their 1-1000 or 1500 kits, uh, I would have treated a groove like that, a seam line, you know, a lot more care and I would have dealt with it a lot more serious than I did on, on a $10 kit. Top and bottom hull 
clicked together. Uh, it, it went together pretty pretty well. There was really no problems with, with it. You just have to make sure you put enough force, especially around the edges. It's easy. The sort of the, the middle part clicks in really well. But you just got to look at the far ends and that. that that's sort of where if you're going to have a gap, it's going to be there. So you just got to put a little bit more pressure and it'll click together. All the center bit, and I did some, uh, that's where I did the, I did a bit of sanding and then filling and then repainted it. Now, if you're going to build this, the only thing that I would do different to the instructions, they suggest putting the entire bridge together and then clicking it in. I suggest only doing the first piece. Now, you're going to do a bit of fiddling to get the second piece in, but... I found it much easier doing it that way because the force you have to apply is in a downward position. So when it was just the front piece, it went together much easier. It clicked straight in. When I had them all together, you had to be careful where you were applying the pressure because if you applied it anywhere towards the back, you, you were going to separate the pieces. I found that doing the front piece first and then having to maneuver the second piece and then finally the fin at the back worked better in the long run. Main fuselage added to the hull. That piece went in so well. A bit of force, but you know, it's not that hard and all the grooves are there and it just suddenly clicks. That's, you just feel it. it starts to go and then snap. It's all in place. Front gun on. And the only thing that was left on this piece was the main uh, thruster at the back and two of the weapon systems that go on the side. So I got the weapon systems on. I decided to keep them gray. That way you've got some more colorization on the hull. Just because of that smaller size, it just gives it, you know, that extra thing that stands out more. If it, that was sprayed green as well, it would all just sort of become one piece. So I went with the grey for the guns there. There we go. Everything's together. And I did a wash. And the wash is probably a bit dark at this time. I did went, I did use some gold too rather than silver just to be different. I usually, if I'm going to do uh, weathering, it's, it's in silver sort of thing. But I thought I'd go with gold just to be different. But it's hard in this scale. This is a tiny, tiny ship. Anything that you do is exaggerated just the way it is so the the wash was a bit heavy in the end i think if i do the do the next one i might water down the wash a little bit more so i did come back with the gray and the green to sort of dry brushed it over different areas instead of just being on the sides like you normally the raised areas actually dry brushed on parts of the hull and parts of the fuselage just to lower the uh the, the wash when it was if I felt it was a bit strong I sort of just went over those areas just to lower it down a bit and uh, she's done so uh, there's some pictures now and I will leave you to look at the finished product great fun great for kids and if you want an easy fun to do quick build and you love science fiction or Japanese anime you can't really go wrong with these they're like 10 to 14 bucks depending on the one you get it's dirt cheap not hard to do and you'll have something that you'll be happy with